for centuries and centuries and centuries, this was never done. And you might say, Gabriel, you're making a big deal out of nothing. You're an extremist. You're a religious radical. I've been a priest for 10 or 15 years, and nobody's ever complained about this. You're nitpicking. Father, let me be very clear. As you probably have heard, within the past five years, there was a poll done by Pew Research. They polled people who went to Mass on Sunday, Catholics, practicing Catholics, and asked them, how many of you believe that Jesus is really present in the Eucharist? And two-thirds did not believe. Two-thirds of your parishioners coming into the church do not believe that after the consecration, this is God. And why don't they believe? One, preaching on it is rarely done. And when it's done, it's not done with the fervor of somebody who believes the living God is right here. The living God who walked on water, who cured the blind, who cured the lame, who cast out demons is right here. Joining us right now in studio, praise be to God. Welcome back. Gabriel Castillo. It is an honor to be here. It is an honor to wake up at the crack of dawn, question my Amen. life choices, and get <laughs> into the studio. <laughs> From your lips to God's ears, praise be to Jesus. Um, your video yesterday, which I saw right after getting out of Holy Mass, uh, really struck me. It should. It should yeah. strike every single person who watches it with a sword in the heart. Every yeah. Catholic who should watch, every Catholic should watch it, hundred percent. A lot of your videos do that, though. So. They're the fruit of prayer and sadness, unfortunately. Yeah. If things were just the, done properly, we wouldn't have to have like videos that pointed out mm. major flaws in our practice most often. So for those uh, <clears throat> that you, maybe you're not, not familiar, Gabriel Castillo, is, uh, he's a youth director at a major parish in you know, Houston, Texas, major archdiocese. He's also uh, a YouTuber. He's got several YouTube channels. What's Gabby After Hours? He's the True main Faith. one, TV. yeah. Gabby and, After Hours, yeah. That's the main, main one. What are all your channels? Uh, TrueFaith.tv is the major website. We have True Faith Talks, which is lectures that I give that aren't worthy to go on Gabby After Hours because yeah. that's where I try to keep things cinematic. Yeah. And then uh, True Faith TV, this is the Facebook, uh, the YouTube channel is where we do podcasts, yeah. Got it. You know, um, I'm on a journey like everybody else. Yes. I didn't grow up Catholic. I was Protestant, uh, hedonistic, and secular for the longest time. And then when I became Catholic, it was to get married. And then when I had a mystical encounter with Christ, that changed things for me, put me on this wild ride, this journey. Yes. And and I'm so naive to things. I didn't know that there was uh, things like uh, rubrics or tradition. Right. Yes. I mean, it's just like you're learning this stuff as you go. But I'll never forget the first time I watched a priest uh, after Holy Mass, take the greatest care and concern to purificate the the vessels, yes. like just absolutely taking his time to make sure there were no particles yes. whatsoever left on either saboria or, or you know or anything. I was just my mind was blown yes. because you could tell that this guy believed uh, what the Church taught yes. about the Holy Eucharist, and then I can tell you how hard it is for me to go to, uh, and I'm not bashing Nova Sordo yes. here, but when I, but there's a part of the reason why I've gone traditional is because how many times I've watched priests at a Nova Sordo mass be very careless and casual yes. on the altar. Tell me about that. And they say that the mass is the best catechesis. And what you said, when the priest takes care of every particle, that's the best catechesis. That says, this is Jesus Christ, every single particle. Watch me with my actions. I want to take a step back. In 2019, we had a doctor's checkup. The Catholic Church had a doctor's checkup. Mm -hmm. And the doctor said, things are bad in the body of Christ. So in 2019, Pew Research did a poll of Catholics who attend mass two-thirds who go into the churches say they do not believe in the central mystery of the Catholic faith. The source and summit of the Catholic faith is that Jesus Christ is really, truly, substantially present. The person of Jesus Christ. Council of Trent teaches us the whole Christ. Mm. The Eucharist is not a thing. It is a person. And two-thirds of Catholics who go into the church, all the people around you, two-thirds say, I don't actually believe that. It's just something that we say. Mm -hmm. And what has the church's response been to that? Nothing. Put your head in the sand. Don't look up. We're going to continue on this path towards self-destruction. And so I didn't want to make this video. I, I, like Joe, have fled from parishes that do these 
practices that say with the language of the body, we've all heard it said, actions speak louder than words. When a priest or deacon or even lay ministers do certain things during the Mass, it speaks volumes. Everything that is done during the math, Mass says this is real or it says this is not real. Yeah. So like Joe, I have fled from parishes that say that the priest says with his actions, this is not real. And sadly, this is something that is widespread. So I went to an adult confirmation Mass at a neighboring parish, and I was in utter shock I, I, I like you had flashbacks of horrible things mm -hmm. when the deacon and lay ministers were putting their hands into the consecrated ciborium the, the large dish that the priest uses in many large parishes they use a large dish uh, they want to show unity and so the, the deacons and the priests would put their hands as if they're grabbing popcorn I'm sure you've all seen it before if you're thinking about what I'm describing the video is much better at showing it and putting their hands like they're grabbing popcorn and just casually dropping the Lord of Lord the Alpha and the Omega Jesus Christ into these little dishes dropping Jesus all over the altar a few consecrated hosts which is really our Lord dropping onto the ground and this is at a mass for adult confirmation Men and women who have said, I believe this, I want to live this, I want to receive the sacraments, I want to be an all-in Catholic, and here they are about to receive the Lord in Jesus and they're watching him all over the floor and the deacons and the priests, and I'm not going to use names or name parishes, but they're acting as if this is not important. Yeah. Um, more respect is given to popcorn that is dropped on the floor at home. Right. Yeah. You're wiping the grease spots off of the floor. There was no lay minister there or altar boy or altar, this primarily altar girls, unfortunately. And they were just leaving the Lord there, all the crumbs all over the floor, which is really our Lord's body, blood, soul, and divinity. So that struck in me flashbacks of when I was a new graduate from the University of St. Thomas where our theology was taught to us very well in the sacraments courses and I had taken a job at a local parish a mega parish and I had gotten in trouble because my students were not acting like our Lord was really present in the Eucharist wow. and I took that as a sword in the heart because that was my number one desire I was failing at the number one responsibility teach Jesus is really present that's like catechism 101 stuff and then I, I reflected on my own life but then upon further observation I realized at that point and you and I was relatively new Catholic as well that the biggest obstacle for my students and for most parishioners to this real presence was the fault of the very parish priest now I don't blame it on these individuals because they're not bad men they gave their life they heard the call of God they said I want to serve Jesus Christ I want to serve the sacraments but in our churches certain ideas especially revolving around community and revolving around unity have been placed over divine realities. So they say, I want to consecrate our Lord in a large dish to show unity where we just had the greatest miracle in human history happen. Bread becomes God. The one who rose from the dead, the one who the Magi came and adored, the one who can walk on water, the one who can heal the sick and cure the blind, the one who raised Lazarus from the dead, just appeared on our altar. Jesus just walked through the door, body, blood, soul, and divinity, and you're saying, I, I, I see this guy over here, but let's talk about unity, ladies and gentlemen. Oof. Forget this great mystery and miracle. The, the longing of your heart can be answered right here at this altar. Let's not think about that. Let's think about how we're a community and the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. God is present in all of us. I don't need God present in you, Joe, no offense. I need God <laughs> present, body, blood, soul, and divinity. Yeah. And so I made this video to highlight highlight and to show and to, to walk people through this various ac actions that can be done and how this can so easily been avoided because this is new the yeah. loss of faith in the real presence is new I, you know we a part of the adrian i know you had a question <clears throat> i want to get to that but let me just say this real quick a part i think part of the issue is the development of the the mega parish yes yeah. uh, i think has bred a lot of uh inappropriate yes. actions that have become commonplace yes. adrian what did you have yes uh i was just thinking about you know saint john bosco and his vision of uh the eucharist and the Blessed Virgin being yes. the thing that will keep us stable during yeah. turbulent waters. And I'm just thinking, like, all this craziness happening yes. with the Blessed Sacrament, it's an attack by the revolution yes. against uh, Our Lady and Our Lord. And also, I think one thing that needs to be addressed is this army of extraordinary ministers yes. of Holy Communion that we wouldn't need to have a bunch of tiny ciboriums yes. all over the place if we didn't have an army of extraordinary ministers. What say you, Mr. Castillo? So the solution to this is simply bring up these ciboriums 
Emporium that have the bread, altar bread, already in it and consecrate it at that point. Don't separate our Lord into various dishes because there's no reverent way to do this. And it's the video's blown up. It's not even been 24 hours. So on my YouTube channel, it's gotten almost 10,000 views, not even 24 hours. On my Facebook page, it's gotten almost 40,000 views. Wow. So people Praise are God. upset. We notice this, but we don't realize we have the power to do something. So what is a lay person to do? Number one, realize that what you see impacts your faith. Actions do speak louder than words. The greatest gift you can give your child is faith in the real presence and taking them to masses where father is saying with the language of his body if he's the, the principal guardian of these sacraments if he's not acting like it's really jesus there ain't no way it'd be a miracle if your children believe that it's really jesus so thing number one watch the video pray about it share the video if you've discerned that's what god's will is for you talk to your pastor he's most likely if he's doing this and he's been doing it for a long time he will most likely have a hard heart so you need to pray and ask the holy spirit to come upon you and pray that he receives your information with humility it would take a lot of humility for him to stop and change course at this point but what if he what if he doesn't accept you well be willing to walk away and sadly you'll have to do like many of my uh friends here and go to a parish and give money to a parish sadly the priests care about money as well give money to a parish that shows reverence to jesus christ where the priest knows that his job is to save souls and to bring our lord into people's lives if you're a parochial vic vicar and listening to this many young priests they know better on that adult confirmation i went to there was a newly ordained priest there and he was looking at me and i was looking at him i'm not going to say his name either <laughs> and you feel like i can't do anything because i'm not the pastor one, you can do something. You are a priest of Jesus Christ. What can you do? Talk to your pastor and say, this is a problem. And, and tell him, there's a reason why people don't believe. And if he says, no, you're going to do this because I am like a little communist and I'm going to make you do my will. <laughs> well, in that case, there's been a long-standing tradition in the church to use only your pointer finger and your thumb to touch the Eucharist after it has been consecrated. Do it slowly. Do it reverently. Every time you touch our Lord and you're moving Jesus from one ciborium to another, make a little prayer that, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Take your time. And like Joe mentioned earlier, this reverence, this care that you're showing will say with the language of the body this is really jesus christ and it will be an affront if the, the pastor says stop this I, i'm not stopping this and if you're a pastor and you're doing this i beg of you go before our lord in the blessed sacrament one watch the video with uh, humility go before the lord in the blessed sacrament and say lord speak to me have i been doing things wrong and be open to changing your habits if that's if, if that's necessary college you is watching your video man that's oh, I, I know i was having flashbacks i yes there, I've, I've shared this before on the show, so people, so the fans know the story, but for those that are, are just joining us, Gabe has a video out called, uh, Dear Father, Please Stop. It's yes. linked up on Gabby After Hours. We've posted in the comments of YouTube, of Facebook, where else? Odyssey. Oh. Uh, I think I put it on LinkedIn, so go to my profile on LinkedIn, you'll find it there. Um, and we'll post it elsewhere as well. I'll also send it to you in the email list uh, this week. If you're not on an email list, go to our website and get on grnonline.com forward slash CDT. I mean, the mega parishes. Yes. They have all of the ciborium, you yes. know, this line and, and I empty I, first. I, yeah, I, well, a, even with the precious blood. Yes. I can't watch them no. manage all of that. I get so nervous. So part of, part of my journey from Nova Sorda suburban parish life to going trad yes. was this was a big motivator. Yes. So it's like it was yeah, less for me. it was me less about yeah. the patrimony and tradition and Latin yeah. and it was more about that reverence. And the, like I mentioned in the interview, the first time I saw a priest take care and concern, that was a Nova Sorda guy. Yes. But watching him be so meticulous. I'm like, my mind was blown yes. just watching. Like, what does this guy know that, that we don't? This right. was so incredible. But I got to tell you how many times I've seen a deacon. Deacons are, a, no offense, but a, deacons are notorious they're, for they're, being horrible their callers, at that. Yeah. The, the callers of their vestments. Yep. Bring the, make the fiddle back great again, I said. Yes. Uh, it just grabs and launches yes. our Lord onto the floor. And I can't tell you, I've seen them drop hosts on the floor and then not know. Yes. And I am literally shaking and from the emotional experience of watching them step on our Lord. And they don't even know. And they don't even care. 
So this right. is something very important we need to mention in the main show that St. Teresa of Avila would say that desecration of the Eucharist has, a, a, has an impact on the faith, that God will remove the theological virtue of faith from that soul because they have so uh, gone against what they were ordained to do. And so you will try to correct a deacon, especially deacons. I don't know why, but the Lord, the devil likes to go after our permanent deacons and our priests, but you will try to correct them or give them information and their reaction towards you is is hostility and anger and I understand to a certain degree nobody likes being corrected but the lack of humility when dealing with such sacred they're doing things that angels would be trembling before mm -hmm. and they're throwing God on the floor and there's no uh, I'm sorry there's no I'll do better it's it's really shocking the lack of humility and the I watched, hostility I, I had a I had a I, I had this lady Eucharistic Minister of Holy Communion. Is that what they're calling them these days? Extraordinary Minister, Extraordinary Minister, Minister Extraordinary. of Holy Communion. Yeah. Yes. She was carrying the precious blood, tripped yes. down the stairs, fell. Wow. And I oh, threw myself on top of the spot. I'm that worthy, a worthy thing to do. A good because people were just right. like, yes. and I just, yes. I was pushed. They're like, what are you doing? Yes. I'm like, go get purificators right now. Yes. Like, I could not deal with it. At my, like, it's course. so emotionally yeah. overwhel overwhelming. At my parish, one of the reasons why our pastor stopped giving the precious blood of our Lord was because there was a spill and the Eucharistic minister covered the spill with a purificator and afterwards there were shoe prints all over the purificator yeah. because people were stepping That's all why over. I stayed there. And then so he said no more. I didn't leave yeah. until You people don't believe. I yeah. did not leave until they had it all cleaned up. Yeah. I literally stayed there for the rest of mass. Yeah. Uh, and they were like, what are you? I'm like, go get wow, purificators yes. right now. We are dealing with this. This is ridiculous. I mean, oh, man. Yeah, there's, you know, this is such yeah. an important video. And I, I was watching it on my way home from Mass. I actually had to pull off onto wow. the side of the road because our daughter was just, she was having a hard time in the car. But it was a great opportunity to watch this. And my blood was just boiling. Because yes. like Joe, you know, I, I, I experienced that so many times. I couldn't, I couldn't be a part of it anymore. But, um, you know, for the people who, who say, well, that's not really all this important, all, all that important, you know, you're making a big deal out of it. What would you say, considering that most people receive, like you said, a catechesis just one hour a week you know, on a Sunday, what, what would you say to those kind of people? I'd say that we, we're not taking advantage of the great history and tradition of the church. The, the church, especially in the old mass, once you start to go after a couple times, it, it, I didn't like the old mass when I originally went, but that mass was created specifically for, designed specifically for, to safeguard the teachings of the church. And the new mass has so many opportunities for uh, invention that it's just, we have become so desensitized. We have become so desensitized. When a person goes to the old mass for the first time and you say, I wonder what's happening and why it is happening, the why is it happening is because Jesus is really present. In the new mass, because of the invention of the mega parish, there's this great temptation for the priest to feel like he is an entertainer and that this is a large dinner that I am presiding over, yeah. as opposed to the sacrifice of our Lord in an unbloody manner at the cross, we are present. Our Lord is giving his body, blood, soul, and divinity to us, really present. And it is the answer to all of our problems. Our Lord is present. And I had a priest reach out to me. I've had a couple of priests already within the 24 hours reach out to me and say, thank you so much. I'm going to change my practice. Yeah. I've God. been pondering this. But then I had one reach out and say, well, the church law allows it. And then I had a deacon reach out to me, to me and say, you're a hypocrite. Don't you know that we're all the body of Christ? And it's like, thank you for being such an obvious example of what's wrong with the church. You know, and OK, so I don't want to upset the people who go to Nova Sorda Mass. Right. Uh, I'm not. That's not my. Yeah, motivation. me neither. Yeah, no, me neither. But like uh, this morning, I saw a video. I guess a couple people priests were passing a rugby ball up at the altar yeah. you know we, we see that stuff all the time yes. let alone what you've discussed yes. in your video which is monumentally worse in my right. opinion yes. uh but all of that apparently is okay right but traditional forms of piety right. and sacraments aren't. I mean, yeah. it's like it's mind boggling right. what's going on in our church right now with the pressure to, you know, uh, the, the the suspension of ad orientum ad novus ordo yeah. in dioceses across yes. the world 
I, explain that. Yeah. What priests and bishops need to realize, as a layperson, I am your number one customer. What you need to realize is, I don't want you. I want God. What you have to offer me, your entertainment, does not compare to what I can get on my own Amen. for good money. Yeah. What I want from you is one thing, Jesus Christ and reverence for him. And if you don't give that to me, you can say, I'm going to ban ad orientum. Why ban ad orientum from a priest who wants to give it from people who want it? Because that yeah. gives reverence to God. But doesn't the rubric yeah. say that yes, they're only does. supposed to turn and yes, face the people rigid. at yes. certain points? Yes. But, and we're talking the Novus Ordo but here. You have to understand also, just as there's corruption, many places there's corruption in the church. And so a lot of times people will refer to the germ, which is in Latin, a bad translation of the Latin, and say that altars should be built in a way so that if they wanted to, the priest could face the altar. But the translation that is used in many places says the, the altar should be built so that the priest faces the altar, as in it's a demand. So a lot of times bishops and uh, priests whose agenda isn't Jesus Christ uh, will go to this reference. So th the problem is higher end. But yes, as of right now, the Roman Missal that the priest reads presupposes that the priest is not facing the people because there's places where it says, and now turning to the people, the priest faces the the, the people. So what most people have to understand, if you're kind of new to this, is these are all interrelated because one posture says, Jesus is really here. It's not about the entertainer, hashtag the priest. It is about Jesus Christ. And another posture says, I am the priest. I am leading people to towards God. Mm -hmm. And it points towards the Eucharist. I went to a mass mm -hmm. once. And well, this is the other thing that I was thinking about watching your video yesterday. I went to a mass many years ago. And uh, and the priest was so casual yeah. in body language. He First yes. of all, he, he wasn't wearing clerics under his vestments. Right. He, he's when he sat in the presider's chair, he had his feet stretched out and crossed. Yes. When he was consecrating the host, he held the, the host in one hand and he put it like off to the side. He rested his hand on the altar holding the host. He didn't put it in front of him and speak right. the words. Right. And uh, he just like he, he he looked opposite. He looked the other way, read it out of the book and then lifted up his hand just so casual and then put it back down. Yes. And then and the whole time I'm thinking there's a problem here. Yes. There's something not right. And then at the end of Mass, he, he ita missa es, you know, go forth, the Mass is over. Oh, he did not say it in Latin. He I did not. That. He did not. But <laughs> when the Mass was over, yes. he, he was getting ready to process out, and yeah. he, went, he went, oh, darn it. And then he turned around, and behind, you know how the, uh, the, uh, the tabernacle is, you know, yes. on its own little pedestal behind a lot of these altars. He turns around, and sitting next to him, uh, next to the uh, tabernacle on the outside, but sitting next to it, was a... Uh, uh, a host in a Luna and he takes that and puts it on the on the main altar and then walks off because the people must have wanted adoration after and, he and the whole time yeah. I'm thinking holy our Lord was there the whole time are, yeah. are you kidding me I mean like I was so profoundly upset by this situation thinking oh. how is it possible that this priest actually believes right that that's our Lord he it, his behavior was so casual and this was this was a few years before I ever went to a traditional yes. mass. I mean, really, it's, it's mind-blowing. Sometimes they'll get, they'll, people will judge people like you and myself and Rudy and Adrian <laughs> when we get so passionate and upset and angry. And they're like, man, you guys are just angry. I, I don't think you understand. We have the greatest treasure in the entire world, and you're treating him like a second-class citizen and like dirt. If I'm not passionate and upset about this, wh what would I get passionate and upset about? And not only that, but this impacts my children. This impacts yeah. everything that I, I, I baptize my children to raise in the faith, and the one person who gave their life in the sacrament of holy orders is the, the biggest obstacle to my children. Mm -hmm. So I am fighting you, unfortunately, because you're the biggest obstacle. You, you are the Satan in front of me, unfortunately. You are the anti-Christ. You are against Christ, it's and you are wearing a chasuble. Well, not even wearing a chasuble. Who knows what you're wearing now? <laughs> yeah, right. It's exactly. all for the love yeah. of God. You yeah. know? It's all for the love of souls, all for the love of our precious you know, Lord Jesus. Yes. You know, I talked about this before when I was talking about, uh, you know, Thomas Russell yes. and his whole thing where he uh, he got up and started uh, deriding the priest yes, who, uh, us. <laughs> <laughs> who was uh, blaspheming our Lord at the yeah. altar. And I was thinking about this and I talked about this in the show before. But I, the, the reason why we're we get we get these kind of reactions where people are like, wow, how could you do something like that? Oh, my goodness. Uh, you should not do that. Oh, why are you so mean and radical? Yada, yada, yada. Those kind of accusations. 
what I've noticed is we've been desensitized. Yes. We've our our consciences have been so eroded by yes. constant blasphemy, by constant abuses, by constant sacrilege that when we see these what quote unquote minor sacrileges, yes. minor blasphemies, we're like, eh, you know, it's not good. But I mean, what are you gonna do? It happens. Right. Um, instead of being having a sensitive soul, whenever you've been away from that, when you've been at a parish where there are not these abuses happening all the time, and then you go to a parish where it happens it's like getting hit by a two by four yep. and mm-hmm. with children it's even worse yep. and i just I, I can't even fathom i just think about what if our lady was standing there mary mother of the eucharist was standing there watching us receive communion how did our lady receive communion how did our when saint john the evangelist gave her communion what was it like for her to have our lord back into her like yes. she was pregnant with our lord and in, at the incarnation it's just so unfathomable how people don't re like they don't grasp this idea. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I Maybe don't know. we should do the breathing exercises that priest. Uh, <laughs> Did you guys see the video uh, of him? Did you see the video? Yeah, there is a priest and he's in one of the dioceses, if I'm not mistaken. Florida, Florida. He's in Florida. Yeah. And it's, yeah. The diocese banned at Orientum. Yeah, yeah that's yes. correct. Mm-hmm. And uh, this priest, instead of doing a penitential rite. Led the congregation. I didn't want to call them parishioners. Led them through breathing exercises like it was yoga. Almost. I think he did wow. both. I think he did the penitent right <laughs> did afterwards. Did he? Yeah. Okay. Well, I, well, I guess I'm glad me, he did me the Me and my roommate, right, but me and my roommate watched the entire mass. So cringy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was literally cringy. Then was it the same diocese that the priest wore a T-shirt and it stole? Yeah. Yep. No yeah. chasuble. There I mean, go, that's apparently okay. Yeah. Like, all of that, like, part of me, it's like the boomer generation embracing the experiment. Yes. You know, and to go back to Van, the Van Maren conversation we had earlier, it's all linked, right? Yes, that, that it is. Whole, it is. That whole generation of let's experiment, let's deny, let's deny the tradition patrimonies, and let's just experiment with whatever, and that generation's dying off. But in their death throes, yes. they're trying to do as much damage as possible possible along the way and they're trying to force us people like you and me into their model right to make them feel like well our church isn't dying uh, you know you're forcing me to go to your versus popular mass i don't want to go to it you know and i know we're running out of time adrian has to do another job this, this morning but uh um we have a little bit more time okay uh, something you said too that really struck me is you know as a parent i got six kids and three yes. grandkids and it became more and more apparent to us as a family that we need. We're gonna have to do something about this. We yes. can't just. We can't just go to these things anymore nope. and pretend like it's fine and Don't normal and it. okay. As we've grown, as we've become more, uh, we've understood more, and it's really been a journey for us. Yes. I mean, I remember going through my apologetics phase, totally oblivious to liturgical issues. Yes. I mean, I was more concerned about, you know, why we call our priest father yes. and why do we, why, why we don't worship Mary, but we reverence Mary than I was about anything liturgical. But so as that became more of an awareness to me, it became more important to go, I'm exposing my children to this subtlety that could really confuse them. Yes. And it uh, became important to, to move. I just read a quote, though. John Christensen was saying that among the bishops, he doesn't know any that would be saved, like oh, from the ones oh. that he knew. And that's a great saint, so. Yeah. Yikes. I wouldn't want that job. Yeah. Tough, definitely not. You know. You know, and I spoke about influence earlier. You know, the bishops have incredible influence. Yes. Some of them don't know that. Yes. Oh, and they some could. of them use it th- in the worst ways. If they really wanted to, if they could, if they would stand up and, f- I, I'm reminded of Lord of the Rings when Theoden King was under the uh, false influence of Saruman, hey, and yeah. Gandalf said, "Reach and feel the strength of your sword. Know what it feels like to hold your sword again." If bishops would take up the sword of their authority and, and march forward confidently, how many of us men wouldn't follow right behind them to right. go wherever they wanted exactly. to lead us? Exactly. Yes. That's. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm listening to. I'm listening to William Wallace in my head yes. right now. Too. Talking to Robert the Bruce. Right. Well, unite the clans. Unite the clans. That's right. I follow you. Yeah, that's right. We would. We follow you anywhere. That's yeah. right. Yes. Oh, you know what would be a great movie? A story of King St. Ferdinand 
Oh my goodness! I was just we were talking about him, yeah. and uh, I was just thinking about him. He had a, such a devotion to the Blessed Virgin. Uh, one of the lines he gives that I just remember vividly, and I recite often. He says uh, when he was going off to battle, he was going off to fight a war, and it was uh, going to be a bloody battle. Mm -hmm. And our his mother was saying, telling him to stay home. His mother was a very holy woman. His mother was home. Stay, stay home. Don't go out. And he turned to his mother and said. Our Lord did not redeem man in the soft embrace of his mother's arms, but in the cold wood of the cross. <laughs> oh, and so that. his knight can only do likewise. Yes, Amen. I love that. You know, I think it's an important point to, to, to dive into, too, is, you know, the avoiding suffering. Yes. I mean, I, I'm having flashbacks to a, uh, a master sergeant in the Marine Corps who would say, you know, we don't have to practice for miserable. Miserable comes all on its own. That's right. Uh, and so I, I get it. We don't need to go looking for it, but we sh should we avoid it altogether? I, th I don't know. Our Lord suffered on the cross, yes. and we're supposed to suffer next to him. And what I like about Jesus, I know you don't like the movie that's The what, Chosen. That's what Colbe got in trouble for yes. with a lot of his friars, because he embraced holy poverty to a degree they couldn't. Well, one thing, I've been reading scripture and watching it side by side with The Chosen, which is not, like, it's got its problems, but there was something that I really I noticed. Hear, yeah. I that hear, yeah. Jesus was constantly going out of his way to get in trouble. Yeah. He was constantly, purposely healing on the Sabbath. He would go into a synagogue, which was equivalent to going into our Mass, right. and... In the middle of this synagogue occasion, he would heal somebody on the Sabbath in front of everybody. Yeah. And if our bishops would have the strength and the courage to go to take the cross to the fight yeah. and to stand before the big, to go before our, mm -hmm. you know, Planned Parenthoods, to go before all these transgender things and bring the fight to them, the gates of hell would not prevail. Could you talk about Eucharistic processions, Rudy? Yes. I mean, could you imagine if every bishop mandated a Eucharistic procession of just men yes. in their dioceses uh, in front of either Maybe. Planned Parenthoods or story hours or, or the porn the shop? Well, what I about mean, the, gay, the gay processions that they have? If we have a Eucharistic guns. procession meeting them head on? Yeah. Hey, by the I'd way, there. I, I'm, it didn't, I, listen, you thought you were slick making a video to talk about The Chosen, right? Yes. You, I knew you were talking to me. Okay. <laughs> Calling me out in one of your big videos about uh, knucklehead Catholics who do who reject The Chosen. Listen, I knew it was me when you were, the whole time. It's got, a, it, it's helped me a lot. It's You're got its weaknesses, me personally. But. After show tomorrow, yeah. don't let me forget, I want to tell you all about my trip to El Paso. I had some really funny stories to share. Oh, wow. All right. God love you, Gabe. Thanks for your Thanks. time today. It's an honor to be here, truly. Yeah, Thank we you appreciate so much. it. God bless you guys. Thanks for hanging out with us. We always enjoy hanging out with you. God love you and God bless you. Do us a favor, share us with a friend. If you did not like today's show, do me a favor on YouTube, smash the dislike button twice, okay? Really ensure that we know you don't like us. That'd be very grateful. Otherwise, the thumbs up and the share would be amazing. God love you.